Hello. Um, thanks to everyone joining us today. Uh, my name is uh, David J. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I am on the board of AVEN, um, and I am pleased to uh, introduce uh, Yasmin Benoit, also on our board, and uh, Joshua, who's very kindly interpreting for us today. Um, uh, Yasmin, would you like to say anything before we um, before we start? Uh, just hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I, I think most of you probably know by now that I'm on the board, but just in case you didn't, I've been on the board since 2019. And yeah, I'm looking forward to addressing all of your feedback and concerns in this live stream. Um, and thank you to everyone who has commented on the change in the site comments thread. Um, uh, to folks who've raised concerns, especially folks who've raised, I think, some valid concerns that I want to be able to talk about today. Um, thanks to everyone who has added questions to the Slido. Uh, and I will see if I can um, uh, put a uh, find a way to put that Slido link. But if you go to sli.do and then use hashtag asexual definition, you'll see the questions for um, that we'll be answering today. And I wanted to, um, so thank you to everyone. Um, and I also, when I read the, um, me, uh, us and the other folks in the board, read a lot of the concerns that people have had. I just want to say, I see a lot of fear of um, being vulnerable. Like, there is a world out there that has a very strong sexual imperative that expects us to be showing up like in a way that doesn't work for us, that doesn't work for our bodies. Um, and that's really scary. And it's really important to have a space that feels safe from that. Um, and so I want to speak to the need to have that space and how we build it. Um, because that's, that's, I think, something that I share with a lot of the concerns that are being said here today. And I think uh, what I'd like to do is, um, first of all, just share a little of the history of the definition of AVEN and uh, the definition of, of asexuality on AVEN <laughs> and how um, uh, some of the context that came into this decision that the board made. And then I would um, love to uh, go through and pull out some of the, I think, really valid points from the thread and site comments and speak to them, uh, and then speak to some of the questions that are you all are putting on Slido. Um, uh, so Yasmin, do you have any anything you'd like to add before we dive in? I think I'm doing a lot of the talking at the beginning, and then I'm excited to have more of uh, more. Uh, back and no, forth. I think I think we're good. I just commented on the um, on the thread on Avon just to remind people that we have just started. So yeah, I think we're ready to go. Awesome. Um, so Avon, uh, Avon started um, back in 2001. Um, and it started at a time when the definition of asexuality was being debated in what was then the, the Haven for the Human, human Amoeba. Um, this one Yahoo group with like 40 people or so on it. <laughs> there was one email thread and we were going back and forth. and in that email thread, there was a big division between people uh, at that point, like me and like a handful of other folks who were early in AVEN um, and other uh, and some other folks who were part of sites called things like the, the uh, Official Asexual Society. And um, in that debate, uh, the um, some people felt like it was really important to have a definition of asexuality that was clear and consistent, that made sense to the world. There was a sense that if we didn't make sense to the world by having a really consistent definition, then we would never be understood, we would never be accepted. And so we had to clearly define what asexuality was, and we had to make sure that only people who met that definition were invited into the asexual community. And they would put up these quizzes. It was like a 10 item quiz. And you had to answer every question a particular way in order to qualify as asexual. And they really wanted to have this community built around um, like a, the, the definition be an enforced 
barrier for who was allowed in the community who wasn't. And on Avon, we really felt differently. We felt that um, a definition was a tool and not a label, that we were going to have a set of words on our website that was sort of like a flag that people could see from far off and gather around. But ultimately, the definition of asexuality was that if someone identified, if someone chose to identify as asexual, then that person was asexual. Um, asexuality was a tool and not a label. So if it was useful to someone and they picked it up, then it was our job to respect the fact that that person had picked up the identity and was using it. And if it stopped being useful and they put it down, it was we could respect that they were putting it down. And when everyone picked up the tool, they could um, sort of tweak it, define it, paint it their own fabulous colors, um, make their definition of asexuality a little bit different than everyone else's in order to match their own personal experience. And so in that way of thinking about identity, which was really core to Avon's founding, um, a, uh, a, um, if someone identifies as asexual, you kind of have to get into a longer conversation about what that word means to them. You can't just assume it means one consistent thing for everyone, which is I think pretty true of our experience regardless, right? Like my experience as an asexual identified person is really different than yours, Yasmin. It's really different than, um, uh, than uh, someone who is, um, uh, than someone who grows up in a community of faith. Um, and so I think that that need to not have um, that need to have a um, a definition that is flexible and that meets the people who it's serving has always been really important. And because we had that, um, because we had that flexibility and who could show up and who was accepted in the community, we started to see these other terms emerge. We started to see gray A emerge. We started to see demisexual emerge. And those were um, really because asexuality uh, was, was originally called just asexuality, and what now I call the ace spectrum, was a spectrum. Um, and you had people in the middle who experienced um, sexual attraction enough that it was a thing they wanted the world to know about um, in some way. Uh, they wanted to be externally visible and legible. Um, and so, uh, those folks identified as gray A and Demi. And then you had folks at the end of the spectrum uh, who experienced either no sexual attraction or so little sexual attraction that it really didn't matter. Um, uh, according to, um, according to I think the latest ACE census, 30% of people who identify as asexual have experienced some form of sexual attraction at some time in their lives, but it's small enough and rare enough that they, uh, it's not something that they necessarily like, that it doesn't make sense for them to identify as gray A or Demi because of a thing they felt one time five years ago. And so uh, over the years, as I've gone around and done ACE visibility stuff, I've been approached by a bunch of people who've said, um, look, me and a bunch of other people who identify as asexual that I know all have this thing of like, uh, we have experienced some tiny amount of sexual attraction, but the definition still, um, but the word asexual still makes, feels a lot better to us and makes a lot more sense to us than the word gray A. And um, we've been, I think as a board, sitting with what to, uh, sitting with what to do about the fact that the definition on our homepage doesn't match the population of people who use that definition. It doesn't match a, a pretty significant portion of the population of people who use that definition. Um, because, uh, because our core identity is, our, our, our core belief is that um, definitions are about who picks them up. Um, and there is a balance, and I think it's an important balance, between those two things that happened um, that were necessary at, uh, that, that were kind of in debate at Avon's founding, between, on the one hand, comprehensibility and simplicity, 
I think that um, I could imagine going too far and having a definition that was um, that was very like um, that was kind of too difficult to make sense of and um, inclusion. And I think that uh, what we've decided as a board is that there are enough people at sort of the end of the spectrum who are identifying as asexual that it makes sense to have a definition that is inclusive of the people who are using it. And um, we are, uh, and I think one thing that's been true and true in Avon's history is that the people who, the people who said that if we weren't, um, uh, the people who said that we needed to focus on having a definition that was clear, that we needed to focus on having a definition that was simple, that unless we could kind of take the complexity of our own experience and collapse it and hide it to be comprehensible to the world, we wouldn't be seen and accepted. Um, I think a lot of them have proven wrong. What we've seen throughout asexual history is that when we stand up with the complexity of our experience and the complexities of our stories and the diversity of our stories, um, and we share those, those can be seen and accepted and they allow allow all of us to be more accepted and they allow more of us to be accepted than if we create definitions that exclude people. And so that's the principle that I think we're acting from as a board when we think about this definition change. Um, uh, I'm just checking my notes. Um, so I think with that, uh, I will, um, Yasmin, see if you have anything you want to add. I know that there were some great, there were some um, good points that were raised in the forum that I wanted to take the time to speak to, but curious, curious if any, if any, you have any thoughts before we dive into that. Well, before we get on to the questions, we wanted to speak to some of the concerns that were raised in the thread. I can see that a lot of people are posting questions in the comments and a lot of people have also posted questions in the Slido, which we will be getting to later, but we have been following the thread, even though both myself and David J haven't exactly been actively responding to them. We've been picking some of the comments that seem to be representative of a train of thought that a lot of people were having. And then we're just gonna kind of discuss some of those concerns that were echoed in the thread. And I can see it also being echoed in these comments as well. Um, so we've selected some representative ones. Um, should I just go, should we go into those now? Yeah. Um, and maybe we can start, uh, Yasmin, I, I put a bunch of them here and we don't, they're, they're uh, I don't want to use all of our time just on the thread, but, um, maybe we can start with, uh, with a few of these that feel like that, that you think are, would be good to talk to, speak to. Yeah, I think one of the things that kind of touches on what you mentioned before, I think is someone posted, I, I'm sure I could probably say their name if I'm going to pronounce it correctly, which was Knight of Cridonia, Cydonia. Um, they said that they think that the consequences of the change are going to be greater than the perceived gains because there is a very subjective view of what is considered little and that this change could add even more misconceptions about asexuality, attract more confused people to the forums, um, and make asexuals who feel no sexual attraction, not a little, but zilch, nada, feel like they can't relate to their own label and make it harder to educate people about asexuality, which is one of Avon's main purpose. That is something that has been echoed in the forum quite a bit, this idea that it's inclusive to the point of being too complicated and that it's going to make more people feel like they might be asexual, which I guess we're seeing as potentially being a negative and coming to the forums, being confused and asking questions. Yeah. And I think I would, um, first of all, I would say, uh, I, I understand the fear of people being confused. Um, and I understand the fear of, not having a place where we can show up 
to talk to people who share our experiences um, and get away from this, the pressure that exists in our society to perform the sexuality that we don't have. Like, I feel that, I get that. Um, and uh, when I have talked to asexual people who have experienced very small amounts of sexual attraction, like, I don't feel threatened. It's not, there's not a meaningful difference between their experience in the world, the struggles they're having, the things they need support with, and the struggles and experience that I'm having as an asexual person. And uh, I would really, I think I would question that people showing up who have experienced, like, they see the term asexual, they see the term gray A, and they say, you know what, the term asexual really fits for me, even though on very rare occasions I've experienced sexual attraction. Like, I don't think that those people showing up is a threat to our safety and cohesion as a community. And when I think about people from the outside, uh, I don't imagine that, um, I don't think that naming that we are a community that sits, uh, and, and even that the word asexual is an identity that sits on a spectrum is going to create confusion if that accurately describes the people who hold the identity. Uh, I think that people will look at that and still say, oh, this means you are experiencing um, either no sexual attraction or very, very small amounts of sexual attraction. And so I should, uh, I should um, like seek to understand and respect that. And if someone's being respectful, I know that there was another concern that was raised about what if people see this and then think they kind of have a chance with asexual identified people that otherwise they wouldn't. If anyone is being respectful, first of all, if someone's not going to be respectful of our identity, they're not going to Google it and look at Avon. <laughs> um, and e if they do, if they're going to be respectful, then they're going to ask questions about what asexuality means to the person they're talking to. And I think that's the, the piece that I keep coming back to is we're going to be in a community where if we want to understand someone's asexual experience or demisexual or gray experience, we're going to need to ask for a story deeper than a definition. And that's always been the case, and that's going to continue to be the case. And uh, and so there will always be room if, for those of you who experience absolutely no sexual attraction, never have, and feel like that's a really critical part of your identity, there will be room for you to tell that piece of your experience in the story. It just won't be baked into a definition that inaccurately describes the experiences of other people. Yeah, I think it's particularly a good point when you talk about like, you know, you're going to have to ask for people's individual stories to understand what their experience of asexuality is. I definitely understand the experience of having an idea of what asexuality is and then having the opportunity to interact with different asexual people and having one of those moments, which can be cool. It can be jarring depending on your mood where you're like, oh, that is not what I kind of envisage I don't feel like I can relate that much and I assumed I would be able to relate to everybody but at the same time realistically everyone's experiences is, is going to be different my experience as an asexual person is going to be different to yours is going to be different to other people's and I think even if we're all using the same terminology even if we are all saying asexual or if you're saying aspec or demisexual whatever everyone's is going to be different either way I think um, are there other 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 comments from the thread that you want to share? Yeah, I think one another point that I saw a lot of people kind of echoing, which I think is kind of just based on a disapproval of defining asexuality as being a lack of sexual attraction. I think that there are definitely people on the forums that would rather lean it into specifically being about sexual activity, particularly sexual activity with another person. Um, there's a comment from someone called Sally, which echoes a lot of points that people had, which is that it should, that they think that asexuality should be defined in a simple, easy to understand way as an innate absence of the desire to have sex with another person, which in turn would consequently eliminate any asexual people that I guess 
you might call sex positive asexual people that still want to have sex or still enjoy having sex or still seek out sexual encounters with other people despite not feeling sexual attraction. So I definitely seen there's definitely been quite a few comments like that. Um, I think, I don't know whether that's an exact example of what people are calling the sexual desire based definition, but I've, I've definitely heard a lot of them linked to that idea. Um, so I can speak to, I think part of the way that we wound up with sexual attraction was uh, especially early on in the community, people recognizing that uh, there were a lot of, so um, that a lot of aces had a relationship. I think early on it was had a relationship with sexuality. So there were aces who masturbated, um, there were aces who related to sexuality in other ways, but there was a pretty consistent thread of not desiring sexuality in a partnered relationship with someone else. And sexual attraction uh, became a way to, became a, a, a pretty externally legible term to define that experience, that, that shared experience that we weren't having. Um, I think uh, it's pretty close to what is named in this as innate sexual desire. Um, but the question of what's innate gets really, to me, gets really, really thorny and, and in a way that makes that, the that alternative definition not necessarily clearer. Um, I, it's something that I think when we reconvene as a board and talk about all of the learnings and things that have come together from this, it's something that we could talk about. But, uh, to me, because we're in a society that has such a strong sexual imperative, it can be really difficult to know what desires are innate and what desires are us um, really wanting a deep emotional connection with someone and feeling like sexuality is the only way to accomplish that. Um, and so I, I think sexual attraction to me, because it's, a, it's an experience that other sexual people talk about having really strongly that I know that I don't have, <laughs> um, uh, that often is kind of pretty upstream from an actual desire for sex. Uh, has felt like an easier litmus test, but that's that's sort of my experience and also the the historical reason why that was chosen. I just wanted to say people are asking, can I see the comments? Yes, I can see the comments. People are saying I'm saying I'm not saying the correct thing. I'm reading exactly what the comments were. We have copied comments and pasted them onto a Google document, and I am reading the words maintain a simple, easy to understand definition. Asexuality is the innate absence of desire to have sex with another person, which would, this is these are my words, keeping in mind that there are asexual people who do still desire to have sex with another person and do have sex with another person. So if you were to define asexuality as having an absence of desire to have sex with another person, that would then not be entirely inclusive of the asexual people that do still desire to have sex with people, whether or not they experience sexual attraction to that person or not. I am literally reading the exact text that is written in front of me. And that and that's text, just to be clear, not from the comments on YouTube, but from the thread in site comments. Um, if I'm reading you right, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if there's a similar thing being said in the, the YouTube comment thread, that's why the language is a little bit different. Um, and this is not me saying my, this is not me listing my concerns or my opinions. This is me reading comments from the thread, which were representative of a lot of the different opinions that we were mm -hmm. seeing. So instead of going through every single thing, we we're just highlighting some that felt representative for those who are confused. And, and if I can just speak to that again, um, what at least my experience has been being in this community for a long time is that whether or not someone has a the shared experience of asexuality, that is the shared experience of not experiencing sexual attraction in a world that expects us to and demands that we do, um, and uh, has very little to do with whether that person winds up in a relationship where it makes sense for them to, like sex is a form of affection that it makes sense for them to do. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why an asexual person may decide that that's something they're open to and I think it's really important that we 
they not feel like they're losing access to their identity and they're losing access to a community when making that decision. And there was another point that someone left called Beak Love. Again, this is not my point. This is one of the points that was on the thread, um, which also echoed quite a few concerns, which I guess was sort of kind of touched upon in some of the others, which is pretty much that because Avon is a point of reference for many media outlets to discuss asexuality, having what they're defining as watery definitions takes away the meaning, makes it unclear, and is going to spread confusion further when it comes to the wider media discussing asexuality. So I think it will force a more accurate nuance, if anything. Um, Jasmine, you and I have both been in the media a lot. Uh, and I think when there there is confusion, but the confusion gets settled when we tell stories about our human experience. We tell what it's like to live life as an asexual person. Um, and when we tell those stories, if we do a good job, we're talking about um, both how within the term asexuality, there's a big diversity of experience and within the asexual spectrum, there's an even bigger diversity of experience. So I think for the media to get the story, they have to get that that diversity of experience exists. And trying to um, collapse asexuality into one narrow set of experiences um, isn't going to make the story simpler for the press and it's going to make it less accurate to our community. Yeah, I agree. One thing that I always try and do whenever I do speak about asexuality, I've always defined it as little to know when I'm speaking to the media. It hasn't really been met with much confusion. I don't think people have found it that hard to understand because I always emphasize that there's nuances to every single sexual orientation, every single sexuality. And I think it does everyone on this planet a disservice to think that everything is is simple or black and white or that there aren't many nuances in the experiences. So I don't think that it's necessarily gonna be a hindrance. I don't think that people take it. I mean, of course there's gonna be outliers, but I don't think that people are gonna take it as far as people fear they will. And I just say that from the perspective of someone that inherently ends up talking to the media a lot and ends up getting a lot of responses from the general public and kind of ends up being in that sphere. I don't think it is actually seen as being that confusing in my opinion. That part is actually my opinion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, but one of the other concerns that did pop up, I guess you kind of touched upon that, was this idea that people are going to think that they're going to take the little to no part so seriously that when you tell them they're asexual, they're still going to apply that. You just haven't met the right person yet idea. There is still a chance this person is probably demisexual and therefore it is going to be like a more unsafe environment for people who identify as asexual because people are now not going to take that as they are sexually unavailable to me. They'll take that as there is still a chance and that could then be a problem. Yeah, and I, I would argue that if someone is going to be disrespectful of our identity, and the truth is a lot of people out there are, then um, a, a more exclusive definition on the Avon homepage is not gonna stop that. Like, they're, they're probably not gonna care to look. They're just gonna come up with whatever definition of asexuality is in their head, and they're going to assume that that's, like, they're going to assume that, and they're going to, kind of be disrespectful from that place. And so I think the um, the question is how do we how do we educate the people who want to be respectful of our identities? How do we educate the allo people who like actually want to be allies to us and get to know who we are and get to under understand our experiences about what that experience is in a way that's accurate. And that that feels like okay if someone's in that place of wanting to be an ally, of wanting to understand our experience, then they can take the time to learn the nuance. And we can take the time to say like, okay, here's where, here's my personal experience, here's where I fit, um, and ask them to understand that about us. Uh, and um, I, yeah, I'll leave it. Do you there. think that it's, to quote someone's feedback, degrades the meaning of what asexual or asexuality means 
to make it inclusive or to kind of blend it with the term asexual spectrum or asexual umbrella or ace umbrella, <laughs> depending on how you want to put it. Yeah. So there's, there's this, um, I think a, a question that's come up a lot is like, the need for an umbrella term and the need for concrete identity terms. I tend to use ace as an umbrella term to refer to gray A, demisexual and asexual people. Um, and I think what we're talking about here is that within the term asexual itself, there is a diversity of people. Like if it's a spectrum, it's the end of the spectrum, but not a like line, narrow line at one finite point at the end of that spectrum. And that's what we want to, um, because we've had plenty of people coming to us who live in that like very narrow part at the end, we wanted to update the definition to be inclusive of the people who, um, who, have, uh, who have that experience. And there was another point I was gonna make on this, but I blanked, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. That actually, that does kind of lead on to one of the other questions, which was, which I've also seen some people in the comments say, which is why not include gray A and demisexuality on the homepage instead of, as well as asexual and differentiate them into separate things instead of using a kind of slightly more general term of asexuality. So um, we, uh, I think that's an awesome idea and something that um, I know I was thinking about bringing up at the board, but with the board, but I wanted to have one kind of take on one change at a time. Um, uh, I think that that is also adding those definitions is definitely something that I'd like us to talk about as a board because I think it would also really well like reflect well how, how our community is structured and do important public, edu public education work. Um, but I think that uh, adding those definitions because doesn't change the desire to have a de definition of asexual of the word asexual that I reflects people who identify as asexual. Right. And another one of the points, which is on a slightly different uh, subject, which is why did the board make this decision and not the community? Um, we went back and forth on this. Um, because this is a uh, this is a debate that potentially is about excluding certain people, like if if there's this been I think a a default exclusion that's been not ideal that I've been wanting to address for some time personally. Um, if we put it up for debate in community, then we are having a debate within the community about whether people from the community should be excluded. And that did not feel safe or appropriate for those people. Um, and so we as a board wanted to, uh, felt it was appropriate um, because this tied to Avon's core values to come out with a strong statement that we did want those people to be included and we wanted the definition to be updated um, accordingly rather than raising it as a question for debate. Well, that actually answers all of the ones that we had written down that were quite representative of what people were talking about on the thread. Um, so next, I guess we can kind of discuss some of the questions that other people are having. Yeah. Um, uh, so there's a, um, there's a question that's gotten a lot of upvotes that is, what discussions have taken place with members outside of ACE communities about the new definition, how the new definition will be interpreted? Um, do non-ACEs interpret it correctly? Um, I can speak a little bit to this, but I feel like I, I've been doing a lot of the question answering. Yasmin, do you wanna, um, do you wanna speak to this first or I can? Um, well, I feel like a lot of people don't know what the actual definition of asexuality is in the first place. Like a lot of people get it wrong in general. Um, um, and there are various definitions online, but I think that one of the most common was, ones is little to no sexual attraction. That is the term that I use when I'm describing asexuality to people, and I do God knows how many interviews a week. And I feel like a lot of my work is speaking to people outside of the ace community. And 
people really haven't found it very confusing and they haven't, they take it when you say it. I mean, of course, I, people to my face are probably being more respectful. There are, of course, going to be people online that say we're just making the whole thing up. But they probably would have said that anyway, <laughs> yeah. regardless of what I was talking about. So I don't think that's unique to to the definition. I think if people are close-minded to anything that they're not familiar with, it doesn't matter whether you say little or not. <laughs> um, but no, I, personally, I haven't noticed people misinterpreting little to no or taking that as a, oh, so you can be converted or this can happen. Or even in my personal life, people haven't um, interpreted it that way. Especially when usually when someone asks me based on personal experiences, I'm sure the people watching, you'll give an answer based on your personal experience. And I don't say, oh, so I, I might feel a little bit of sexual attraction. So there's a chance there. I would just say, you know, I'm asexual. I don't experience sexual attraction. You're not going to have sex with me, but we can chill. And then there tends not to be that much confusion unless they're a jerk, in which case then I wouldn't hang out with them anyway. So it hasn't caused that much confusion, in my opinion. <laughs> well, well said. And I, I'd echo that too. I'd probably say like 2012 or 2013 is when I started when giving talks and talking to the press, defining asexuality as little to no sexual attraction rather than no sexual attraction, just because it had enough conversations with people who were asexual identified, who were in that very little category. And um, and it always, it's never confused people. Um, I'm always defining asexuality in the context of saying there's a spectrum. And so saying that um, an asexual person experiences little no sexual attraction. It's a spectrum, asexual people on the end of that spectrum. And then gray and demisexual people will experience sexual attraction um, either infrequently or very lightly or only in the context of a close, uh, in the case of demisexual people, only in the context of a close uh, emotional relationship. Like that makes, that seems to make a lot of sense to allo people um, that I'm talking to. And I haven't, uh, I um, I haven't had any experience with people who need to have an absolute definition in order for them to get it. Because most sexual people are familiar with everything else in sexuality being a spectrum. So they're like, oh, cool, this is too <laughs> great. Like I think if anything, um, having a definition that's at an absolute would be, and really insisting on that would be unlike the rest of how sexuality works in a way that would confuse people. I think this one actually kind of links, I'm, I am skipping over a question, I will get to it, but I feel like this one links neatly onto what we just said, which is how much is little in little to no sexual attraction? So, um, do, do you want me to answer this you go first? For that one. <laughs> okay, I'll go for this one. So um, uh, there is a, little bit of a area of ambiguity. If someone shows up and they have, say that they like experience sexual attraction in a way that is perceivable to them, like a little yet less than once a year. And they show up on Avon and they're reading through stuff and they're trying to understand where they fit. Um, they may be in this area on, where they, they're like, I could identify as gray A or I could identify as asexual. I'm not sure. Let me think about each word and which one just feels more right to me and which one feels like it communicates to the world what I want the world to know about me. Um, and then they would choose the term that feels right to them. And that's how identity, I think, works. That's how I and how the like board of Avon and uh, historically a lot of Avon has wanted identity to work because it's a tool that pe people pick up when it's useful. So there is intentional ambiguity. Um, there's it's I think it's good that people uh, have um, that the definitions allow people to ask that question and choose the thing that's right for them. So how little is little to me is uh little enough that it doesn't make sense for an individual to identify as gray a instead and whatever that where, wherever they find that um 
is something that I'm bound to respect. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that there is a fear that people have that people that there will be people that take the little part really far or like interpret it in a way that actually isn't that little, but for some reason they still want to identify as asexual despite feeling what some people would consider not being a little amount as being a normal amount or a more than normal amount. Um, I don't really personally feel like that would be personally threatening to me. If, I mean, I've met asexual people or people that fall under the asexual umbrella, maybe they're demi and they already have that relationship and they have formed it and they have someone that they're sexually attracted to and therefore they're experiencing sexual attraction and I am not. They consider themselves as being under the asexual umbrella. So do I. And every other aspect of our lives is different too. So it doesn't really matter that that part is as well. And we're still using the same terminology that doesn't negatively impact me, I don't think. I can understand why people might feel like um, if loads and loads of people stretch the term little, then it may no longer be a place where they feel comfortable. But I have some faith in humanity that people would not intentionally or maliciously do something or identify with a label with the intention of it not actually fitting them. Everyone has an experience that makes them feel like there is something different about them. And that's why they're looking for those definitions in the first place. And if you're having those experiences and there's a good chance that there is a reason for that. Yeah. And so I'll just say different. like, it's not like we give out free ice cream, right? Like when you identify <laughs> no as asexual, <laughs> for saying you're right? asexual. <laughs> or free cake. Sometimes we give out free cake, but we give out free cake, including to, to, when we do, it's not just to people who identify as asexual. So like there, there's, there's no reason to take on this identity unless you feel like it communicates internally to you and it communicates externally to the world, um, something that you want them to understand. And so people who take on the identity asexual like want to be seen as asexual by the world. And I uh, think if someone is showing up, they're learning that gray and demi identity exist, and they're saying, I want, I still want to, like, I still see myself and I still want the world to see me as an asexual person, then there's probably a limitation on how much sexual attraction they are experiencing. And uh, even if there's somewhat like a small number of people who, for whatever reason, um, experience, like they stretch that definition de definition of little to uh, what some would some of us would consider a lot. Like, I think that's going to be rare because there's not a really compelling reason why someone would want to adapt an identity that way. Uh, and if they do, then it doesn't like it. It doesn't harm our community in any way to addition to offer support to that person alongside everyone else. And I can see some people asking about a poll. There is a thing on Slido that says, why don't we have a poll where we present a few options for the definition and let everyone vote on it? Um, I think that this gets back to what we felt as a board, which is, and part of why I think it took us this long to do this is that we knew this would be contentious and we also knew that uh, this would be um, a debate on this definition would potentially be a debate about excluding, explicitly deciding to exclude certain people from the community. And so we felt like it, we wanted to come out and make a strong statement about inclusion rather than having it be something that was decided based on who is most active on the board in this moment. Um, uh, and so I think we are, as a board, planning to move forward with our decision and also taking into account the um, coming back together to discuss and take into account the points that have been raised here. Um, but I think still planning to move forward. And looking at, um, why not mention demisexuality and gray sexuality? Yeah, we kind of covered that one. Um, <laughs> why are we moving forward with the decision even though there's opposition I think we kind of covered that one although there is we are still obviously we're taking feedback like we're listening to what mm -hmm. um everyone's saying 
So, you know, everything is not like a hundred percent set in stone, but it is something that evidently the board are interested in going forward with. <laughs> um, are there any slide or comments that you think we specifically want that you specifically want to go into here? Um, I think there's a question about why not say the term spectrum. Um, and I, I think that that's, as we've talked about, um, that that's a thing for us to talk about uh, as a board, if we're going to include a Demi and gray A identify, gray A identities on the homepage, which is a possibility. Um, I wanna make sure that it can, uh, then there, it may be helpful to have text that describes a spectrum. Um, and when we're talking about the definition of asexuality, um, that is matches the people who are identifying as asexual. And there are, um, there's, uh, there are enough people there who are kind of at the end of the spectrum, but not at a funny point on it, that having a definition that's accurate there um, feels distinct from having a definition that defines the broader spectrum that ace identities fall under. I mean, we are planning on doing some like updating to the website, to the homepage, and we go, I'm sure there will probably be a page that is entirely dedicated to terminology. So don't worry, everyone, there probably will be a section that goes into, if there isn't already, I haven't checked in a while, um, that says everything regarding what is gray sexuality, what is sex favorable, what is sex repulse, and all mm -hmm. those things. So it's not like, you know, no one's going into those nuances. I think the point of this is to have, is to open the door so that people can go into the nuances more rather than to not go into them at all. So one, it's not. It's one, qu one question I want to speak to is um, what then is the specific identity word for a person who does not experience sexual attraction at all? Some in this group would still want one. Um, and I think uh, it's like, I have always, and I think Avon uh, has always encouraged the creation of language. Um, and so on the, I would say both like, if you want a word, then like make up a word, making up words is great. And I think it's really important to ask why that word feels so necessary. Like what, what is it, what is the, difference in experience between someone who has never experienced sexual attraction and someone who experiences it so rarely that a gray identity doesn't make sense. Like why, why is there a need to draw that distinction? Um, because in my experience, like the, the thing that bonds me to other asexual people is not the like, uh, it's not that, it's the struggle that I have in a world that expects me to be sexual um, and tells me that if I'm not, I'm gonna be broken and alone. Um, and like that experience of being told I'm gonna be broken and alone and being told that um, I'm just making all this up, uh, like that's true for me, it's true for, uh, in a different way for gray and demi people, it's true for asexual people who've experienced like very, very rare intermittent sexual attraction uh, and still identify as asexual, like that's that's the common thread. Um, and there may be like, I may be sitting around a conversation at a conference and talking to one person who does not know what sexual attraction feels like because they never felt it and talking to another person. It's like, I think I maybe felt it one time, but I don't know, it was hard to tell. <laughs> like, um, and that's, that is sort of a nuanced diversity of experience, but it's not, um, it, historically for me, when I've been hanging out in ACE community, it, that's, that's not the difference that people lose their identity on. But if people feel the need to, um, I won't get in your way. Uh, though I, I do hold that question of why, why that distinction feels important enough to be a core identity. I've seen there's a few people commenting saying, well, what do asexual people that don't experience sexual attraction call themselves? As an asexual who doesn't experience sexual attraction, I call myself asexual. <laughs> I've always used a little to no sexual attraction definition 
as that's the definition I'd learned of in the beginning. I, I feel like this isn't, it's not new. So I've been functioning, doing this work in our society with, with people thinking that that is largely what the definition is. And it hasn't negatively impacted my experience as someone who doesn't experience sexual attraction. Usually when you answer someone's question of what does asexuality mean, that's not the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. That is the start yeah. of the conversation. <laughs> and then I have to then say what it means for me. And then you then have to go into that. And even though I say I don't experience sexual attraction, there are gonna be parts of my experience that are still different to someone else who also doesn't experience sexual attraction. I'm always asked about libido. I'm always asked about arousal. I'm always asked about romantic stuff. Like I get all those questions about sex repulsion, about sex positivity, about attitudes and all these things. And you do end up going into that. So when you say, what do I call myself? I would just call myself asexual because that's what I am. And someone experiencing a little bit of sexual attraction and calling themselves asexual. And they're going to have to go into that experience. Maybe they don't have a libido. Maybe there's a whole bunch of things that are different but it's like, it doesn't make that much of a difference to me anyway. So I feel like people shouldn't really worry about whether or not they can still stay asexual, meaning doesn't experience sexual attraction because guaranteed that's not gonna be the last thing you say, so. Um, and then there's one here, is the board concerned about member retention and how this will impact community participation for members who have been advocating to go in a different direction? Um, I, I, I can, I think I'll, I'll speak to this first and then Yasmin, um, if you have thoughts, but like I knew and the board knew that this was going to be really controversial, that um, this definition is the, the words of these definition, this definition of this out on the homepage are something that people have become really used to and um, built an identity around. And when we change this, this sort of flag that people gather around, we are not changing the uh we're not changing the definition that people adapt for themselves because it's a tool that you pick up and use for yourself like we're not trying to to change um the experience of asexual identified people we're changing the term that people see from afar to make it more accurate but um uh and we knew this would be controversial and we felt like this was a controversy that uh, where we wanted to um, make a clear statement in favor of the core values on which Avon was founded. And so this is going to be like, I think this is a, a moment of tension around those core values, but that moment of tension is uh, healthy for us to grapple with questions as a community about how we want to be a space that welcomes people um, to adopt the, to like explore its identity and adopt the, the identity that feels right for them. Um, and I think it's an important point for us to come together and, uh, and talk about and understand the costs of policing other people's identity and um, excluding others who pick up the tool of an asexual identity and use it in a way that's different than the than someone else might use it. So uh, I think we are aware of the controversy and also feel like it's an important controversy for our community to be sitting in. I think funnily enough, I think I was probably the only person on the board that naively thought that no one would care and there would be no controversy whatsoever. <laughs> I remember sitting there being like, you care, like no one's even gonna notice, like whatever. <laughs> and then I saw the thread. <laughs> I was like, oh, they noticed, they cared. Um, so whatever, whatever points here do you think we should, uh, we should get into? I am trying to follow your comments, guys, by the way. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing y'all, so be nice. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I'm just looking through these. I wouldn't say it's PR, by the way, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's there's a there's a question, and I want to own up to this about the board being absent, and I want to maybe 
clarify what the board does. So um, we are a collection of uh, kind of ACE activists from um, around the world who come together uh, every other month or so um, and talk at a high level about how to keep AVEN running. So how to keep paying for the servers, um, how to manage the technical side, um, work with the tech admin team to make sure they have what they need um, to keep the site up and running. Um, we work on kind of help to support high level advocacy campaigns that are going, around, going on around change the legislation, around um, trans inclusion, around um, uh, different forms of uh, education happening within the community. Um, and, uh, and I think our, we are one of several organizations, like groups of people coming together to try to advance ACE visibility and education. We govern the formal organization of AVEN, which kind of uh, technically controls the AVEN website um, and most everything having to do with how the forms operate, um, we delegate to the admon team, though we also coordinate with them um, to be helpful when we can. Uh, so we're a, like, we are a governing body, but we are pretty light. This is, I think, one of the more visible changes that we've made in a long time. And because it's one of the more visible changes that we've made, we have we wanted to be more active in engaging with you all. And for some of the reasons that we stated earlier, we also didn't wanna open it as a question to everyone. We wanted to come out with a strong opinion as a board around inclusion. Um, and uh, I would really love to find more ways that we as a board can be hosting events where we can come together and hang out with you all. Um, I know I've really wanted to do that this year and just my day job <laughs> has like taken up all my time. Um, but uh, I think more engagement between the board and the community is something that uh, I know I would, um, I would love to be able to create more room for. And I think this live stream is a step in that direction. And it's, you know, unfortunate maybe that this step is happening in the middle of a big controversy. Uh, but I hope that there can be more ways that you all feel like you can um, be in conversation with us. Yeah, and I mean, I know that some people are like, oh, well, you aren't actually on the forums that often, like, how are you engaging with the community? I mean, I personally, I have 50 messages to answer just from yesterday. <laughs> so I feel like I engage with the community quite a lot. I just don't have the time to also, you know, get too deeply involved in conversations on the forums as well as across all my other social media and e emails and everything. But we're definitely, we're always keeping an eye on things. We're always like people feed things back to us. Um, so we're not as, as far as you probably might think we are. Um, I think some people asking about the project team um, and I guess what our relationship with the project team is or the social media team or whatever. Um, our, our relationship is that we uh, communicate with them about what they're working on and see if we can support it when we can. I think that the, um, the only keys that we really hold are to um, like the technical infrastructure of the site, which we mostly use those keys to keep it up and running, to the uh, to a bank account, which basically has enough money to keep Avon servers running that we occasionally run fundraisers around, and then to the Avon brand itself. So if something's going to be officially endorsed as Avon, then we as a board decide on that. Um, but most other projects, even like, like I, am involved personally in some different legal advocacy that impacts ACE people and ACE families. Um, most of that, most of the other work that we do, we do as individuals as opposed to as board members. And then um, we sort of lean on the board to endorse things or help things, including things the project team is doing when it's appropriate. I think I spotted there's a few, a few more um, Slido comments that I thought were um, interesting. <laughs> Someone asked, um, um, is it- I, I oh, wanna God. pause real quickly, Yasmin. Um, Joshua, our fantastic interpreter, 
uh, we have uh, contracted you for one hour. I don't oh. know if you are open to uh, staying for another few minutes um, or if, okay, awesome. Okay. It's just two, two more that I thought would be good. Spend the, yeah. Two more I thought would be good to touch on. Someone asked, is so is asexuality a spectrum or or umbrella or an orientation or both? And I I would say it's it's both. It is a spectrum. It is although even when you say sexual orientation, like I've always said, like that I pers I don't have a sexual orientation. I have a sexuality that isn't oriented anywhere, especially since I don't experience sensual attraction or like my aesthetic attraction or platonic attraction doesn't go in any particular direction. So it, but then I guess in terms of categorizing things as homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual, those are considered sexual orientation. So in that sense, you could consider it a sexual orientation in the same way as you say black is the color even though it's like an absence of color <laughs> and zero is a number even though it represents nothing um but then it could also be a spectrum and an orientation at the same time in my opinion and then overlap of other orientations too i think i, I want to echo the love in the comments for joshua for staying on I have another few minutes <laughs> um uh any any other Slido comments, uh, Slido questions, Yasmin, that you want to make sure we oh, answer? Oh, yeah. There was one more, which I think kind of echoes something that I think is probably reflective of how people think Avon's one compared to how it actually is, which is pretty much um, asking what type of people is this marketing change intended to appeal to? <laughs> is it low <laughs> libido people who don't currently identify as A's or younger people, et cetera? Who's our marketing targeting? <laughs> oh man, um, we're we're not that cool, y'all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're we, not Adidas I, or something. It's this, not so much a, a marketing thing. We're not Amazon. This, this is uh, this is intended to um, more accurately reflect the uh, population of people who identify as asexual. Um, we recognize that in doing this, it's going to be controversial. Um, that that may like, there will be some people and a lot of you I'm sure are listening who will trust us less because of this. And it is in alignment with our core values and the, I would say the core values on which Avon is built. So like, um, this is about us doing what we believe is right, not us trying to appeal to some external population. Uh, yeah, I think it's all about like you're trying to promote a culture on Avon that is more inclusive and that does serve, you know, everyone who needs it. It's not just this isn't the only like inclusion based thing that like we discuss or talking about, you know, we're always working on being more inclusive in terms of accessibility, in terms of race and ethnicity. Like there's a whole bunch of other things that like we're trying to like promote in the forums to make things like more inclusive. This is just one that relates to the definition on the homepage and hopefully will make it a bit more of an inclusive place and represent the core values more, but it's not marketing. It's not like you change the definition and people throw money at us. <laughs> it's, it's a <laughs> it doesn't really work that way. Um, so no, it's not like some kind of like media seeking, you know, big press moment is literally, is literally just adding a word onto the homepage. Um, cool. So is, uh, um, I think at least that covers the questions that I really wanted to cover. Um, and I know we're a little bit over time. Yasmin, is there anything else that you want to make sure we talk about? Um, no, I feel like I feel like we covered most of the kind of representative, like most upvoted Slido comments. I think we covered the themes that were in the thread. Hopefully for you guys, we've answered some of your questions or at least gave you some insight into what was going on behind the scenes or what we're thinking of or aiming for, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I'll just conclude by saying like, um, I respect the people who are pushing back against this decision. Um, and I thank you for articulating the reasons why you're pushing back so clearly. And um, uh, and I hope that you can see the ways in which there is a um, 
I hope you can see and understand the value that we are choosing to prioritize here, um, even if that's not a value that you would choose to prioritize. Um, and uh, I also hope that this can be a, a moment for us to talk about the really important role that inclusion and the really important role that um, uh, uh, having identity, supporting people and exploring um, the identities that are right for them um, can play in Avon. Yeah, I think that even like, I think all the criticism and everything, I think it's all coming from a place of love in its own way. It's mm -hmm. all coming from looking out for our community and trying to do what's best for the community. I think everyone's kind of coming from the same place, even if there are like disagreements. So I think as long as we can just continue to connect on that level, in the sense that we're all just trying to do something that makes everybody feel, you know, included and loved and comfortable, then I think that, you know, this is just a little, it's just a little blip. And I'm sure that in hindsight, it won't seem like nearly that much of a big deal. It's just at the moment there's like traction around it. Um, but I think it's all coming from a place of love. I don't think anything's intentionally malicious. I'm sure none of you guys are trying to be intentionally malicious. We're not either. We're just all trying to do what's best for the community and keep Avon a happy, inclusive, representative, and helpful place, I think. Awesome. So with that, I want, uh, I'm going to do a round of applause for our interpreter, Joshua. Thank you so much for, um, for helping us today. Uh, and um, thanks everyone for joining um, and for submitting your, your uh, questions on the Slido and comments on the thread.